I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it's the end of a long day of dyeing yarn and it is high time to leave no dye behind. I have here dyes mixed with guar gum at various concentrations. We've got some royal purple, some deep magenta, emerald green, which I think is the dominant color, and then some more diluted dye that had emerald green, extreme blue, and a hint of fluorescent fuchsia. We are going to use all of this dye to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. I don't know the technique we're going to do yet. I'm still a little undecided there, but we'll try to figure something out as we go along and, well, have some fun. Quar gum is a thickener that I believe is often used for, like, gluten-free or sometimes vegan cooking um, because, you know, it's a product when you dissolve it in water, you get more of a paste. And that's really handy for, say, stenciling on blanks, or if you're hand painting yarn and you want the color sections to be really precise. You don't want the colors to bleed into one another. Right now, I am adding removable nylon zip ties onto my yarn. This is a nice way both to have something to grab onto so you don't, like, pull the yarn and create a tangle. Um, and honestly, they are really helpful for untangling yarn in the end. Um, but I'm not gonna pre-soak the yarn. Uh, the colors, some of these colors spread a lot, specifically the emerald green. So we're just gonna see what happens. The dye bath today is also a bit of a leave no dye behind situation. Here we have a hint of some Caribbean blue. Um, just a little hint, and there was definitely some acid in here already. But I think I want to increase the water volume a bit. And this is also decreasing the temperature of the dye bath. The pot has been off for a while. Okay, it is warm, but not hot. Now, the main reason why I was checking the temperature is because if the dye bath was too warm, then when I put in one of these cups, uh, the cup would start to melt. And I like to use these technically disposable cups over and over and over again in my videos. Um, so I don't want anything to happen to it. Now, as for the foam brush, I was kind of squeezing it out. There may be some dye left behind as we go and soak these to wash them, but we're doing the best we can. Eventually, and I think pouring this one in, we may start to see some globs of guar gum <laughs> that are not well dissolved. Um, so that may exist. And this brush had a lot more guar gum in it, and you can see there's like almost like a haze of some of that color, which when it gets on the yarn, may result in some kind of like speckly pattern or something. I'm not going to worry about it yet, but I wanted to take this color and add it in to start. And I think we're going to go ahead and just finish off. Ooh, maybe I need a, I'm bringing the tongue depressor back. I like added water to it and I was like, ooh, ooh, that's not working quite the way I wanted it to. But this, as it is, is going to be a pretty color. Now, unless there's little, I guess, vesicules <laughs> of guar gum left, we're unlikely to see a huge, any impact from the guar gum in here. The, the dye has been diluted enough um, that we should, it should behave just like regular dye and spread through our yarn. But conceivably, the pink and purple dye when we add it, that might still be thicker when we first add it. And so I'm curious about the color, but yes. Okay, see these little, I'm calling them vesicules, but these little bits of dye, those when they land on the yarn could kind of burst and cause like more of like a little, yeah a deeper patch of color on there, which I'm leaning into. But ultimately, wow, we just put it in really quickly. See, Stroll, it soaks up water so fast. But you can see that some of the pigment is soaking into this yarn fast with just a barely warm dye bath. There's not very much pigment left in there. So, hmm, now I need to figure out how I want to arrange the yarn in 
the pot because I guess I want what happens to be a little bit random. So I'm going to start heating things up and I don't know how we're going to go about this, but <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, just adding in like dollops of the gore gum. Is it coming off of the thing? I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Okay, maybe if we take the brush and I'm trying to just like add and rinse off some of the color. Okay. I'm not really necessarily feeling that. It's not bad. It's not bad. I guess I want... There we go. As I bring in a little bit more liquid into here, then I can kind of dollop this yarn with the color. It's a little weird, I'll be honest, but not bad. I'm gonna get rid of the stick. A little bit strange, but you know, we'll move the yarn around, stir up the color, and just kind of dolloping it on and some of it is gonna go and sort of like stay where I put it some of it won't <laughs> this is a true flying by the seat of my pants type moment and you know we have those from time to time around here but the goal is to just have fun and actually I do like what this is doing I just want to make sure I expose different areas of yarn and so now I'm going to hold part of this in my hand as I go in and hopefully I'm hitting both of the two skeins and I have no guarantee that that is what's happening at all. Well now I kind of know because I can kind of tell. Oh dear. I almost felt like I splattered something. I don't see any color anywhere in my kitchen, though. Oh, except maybe my shirt. Well, I'm wearing a tie-dye t-shirt. Uh, let me go check. This is why we wear safety glasses. You know, this would be a little bit easier if I was using a catering steam pan. Um, it would be easier to... Oh, dear. It would be just easier overall to spread out the yarn, um, adding these colors randomly around. I don't know what I feel about it, but I like that the base is a bit of a mint green. And I like that these pinks are like taking like some color like where I put them, but they are also spreading out. So that is nice and we're at about a point where I can start pouring oh I don't know how I feel about that pouring a little bit I think I like applying with the brush a little better although that did add a bigger little patch of color so maybe what I should do is drizzle the dye in and then come in with the brush to kind of help it, because it's a little floating, help it settle. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, the pinks are softening, but there are some larger sections. You know, we're just, we're just gonna go with it. And potentially we'll end up covering up the whole thing with the purple, so I don't know how much this matters. <laughs> as I add that and I'm going to fill this with water add it in and yeah this is getting a little bit of some pink coverage on top of the green there's a little bit of oh. <laughs> patchiness I'm a little exuberant 
Okay, now what I want to do is remove the yarn. We've got this pink in the dye bath. That's pretty cool. Um, this is actually pretty fun already. It's a lot less green than I was expecting, and I am actually really, really happy about that. But now I want to deal with adding the purple, and I think I'm going to just add this in. I think I'm a little bit over the whole thing we were doing before, although I did just put the brush in, and that's going to give us some globbies. <laughs> So, you know, it is what it is, but I just added some water to this to stir it up. And let's see, we're still not that warm. Hopefully we're not in melting cup territory yet. But yes, we've got lots of globs of purple in here. Okay, a little bit more purple. And we're gonna come back with our yarn. I'm moving the zip tie like a quarter of the way around just to mix things up and we're going all the way in because I did do some dip dyeing stuff recently with a green and a purple okay I think we're gonna stay in the green realm I do wonder about those little purple globbies so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of move the yarn around and we're gonna leave it and see what happens I think that's, that's the best that I can do um, <laughs> So anyway, I guess I'm going to heat this for 30 minutes and then we'll just have to come back and see what has happened. Cross your fingers for me. The 30 minutes are up and let's see. We have a beautiful like minty but muted green color with pops of pink and maybe some purplish hints too. It looks like all of the color has absorbed into our yarn. So I am going to go ahead and set this aside to cool completely and then we can wash it. Let's wash our leave no dye behind yarn. Now it might look like we have some like tangles in one of the skeins. You can see one is shorter than the other. That is something that I think will be fairly easy to resolve once the yarn is dry. Um, I never try to figure out tangles or anything while the yarn is still wet. I'm not anticipating seeing any bleeding. The colors here are ultimately not that pigmented, which is really nice. I'm really enjoying the soft blue that we got from layering all these colors together. But I'm gonna add some soap and fill the basin back up with water. And now we'll see if we have bleeding, because sometimes there's no bleeding at first and then you might see something with soap, but I am not seeing any evidence of color bleeding. So I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll finally take a look at our finished yarn. Something about this yarn is giving me a little bit of deja vu. I don't know what it is, and I don't know, I just feel like the pastel with these pops of pink. It's reminding me of something. It feels familiar, but off the top of my head, I can't point to a video where I had something similar to this. If you think of one, please let me know down in the comments. The yarn base itself has patches that are much more green, patches that are more like a slate blue, a grayish blue. And then we have those pops of pink. It was really fun to see how the guar gum was sort of going into the pot and just letting whatever was gonna happen happen here. I'm not sure how well distributed these pink splotches are throughout the yarn. Certainly it's not gonna pool, but I wonder like, will it just be towards one side? Is it gonna be asymmetric? I honestly don't know. What do you think about leave no dye behind videos? Sometimes they end up being really, really short. And so I'm not sure if you enjoy watching them or what. Please, please let me know down in the comments. I mean, I'm going to continue making them because I enjoy the process of leaving no dye behind, the process of throwing dye together and just seeing what happens. Uh, but, but, I don't know, I'm thinking about tinkering maybe with the format or something, or using the dyeing as a 
opportunity to do some frequently asked questions maybe. I'm not sure. So please let me know. I really value your feedback. I love this colorway even more now that it is twisted up. Uh, I think that it is really, really fun. And I don't know, I, I really just enjoy the whole process of not thinking too much and just doing and just seeing what happens when I film one of these Leave No Die Behind videos. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It's filled with hand dyed yarn featured in videos here on the channel, and it's a lot of fun. While you're at it, please subscribe and turn on notifications. That is the biggest way you can support content here. Uh, shopping on Etsy is also very, very wonderful and appreciated, but I know that a lot of you are here to learn about dyeing your own yarn. And so the best way that you can support me is watching and engaging with these videos. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.